interviewing the former hostage Terry Waite, who's kindly agreed to tell readers of the Times exactly what it was like coming out of It's a very different world that these miners are emerging into than the one you came out into all those years ago, isn't it? Well, it, it is a very different world, and they will be coming out, of course, initially to enormous uh, media acclaim, as indeed did the hostage all those years, hostages all those years ago, when there were you know thousands of journalists at uh, Lynham, and that's one of the things that they will have to uh, become accustomed to in the first days enormous, enormous media coverage and media interest, which eventually will presumably uh, die away. What's your tip to them? Because the media can be quite aggressive, can't they, in terms of just trying to get the story? Well, uh, I would say, first of all, they're going to be subject to tremendous pressure. And, and in my advice, which I'm not sure they'll be able to take, is do what you have to do and then retreat. But I don't think they're going to be allowed to retreat too quickly because there are too many vested interests. There will be people who want to gain politically from their release and want to gain some glory and some renown from the fact that they're associated with uh, the miners. And, you know, there's a lot of credit to be uh, associated with them for the, those who organise the, the rescue. Uh, you were incarcerated for four and a half years and they've just been underground for nine weeks, so it's a short time by comparison, yet there are some similarities, aren't there? For example, none of you knew whether you might be alive at the end of each day. How do you cope with that? Yeah, there are similarities, and they, for the first number of days, were really living with extreme threat. Um, the way you cope with that is you learn to live each day at a time. I mean, if you try and worry too much about it, uh, constantly worry about it, you become depressed and you'll, you'll, you'll fall apart. So you take it one day at a time, and when you wake up, you say, well, another day, I've survived another day. And that's the way you go on, rather than uh, letting it dwell on you. And it's largely a matter of temperament. Some people have the temperament to do that, others don't. And one can only hope that in that situation, uh, the, the ones that didn't have that necessary temperament were buoyed up and supported by the others. And any other similarities that you see between your situation and theirs? Well, inevitably, if people have been together for a long period of time in confined circumstances with a great deal of pressure and uncertainty, although at the moment everybody is claiming the group and saying how wonderful it is, but inevitably there will have been disputes and difficulties uh, beneath ground, which some of which may surface. Um, I remember in my own experience uh, I was only with uh, other hostages for the last period of time and uh, I had a, a minor dispute with one of the American hostages which caused him to hold a crutch against me and then take it out later and some of the things that he said to the press which I found at the time extremely wounding and difficult and it taught me a lesson that you know I had to be careful because everybody has their own way of surviving. But there are bound to be that sort of experience that will surface and probably cause some difficulty to some people. And what about changes in family dynamics? Yeah, well, the changes in family life are bound to be there. Um, they'll come out and they'll find, although it's comparatively short time, a couple of months, um, things have surfaced. Other relationships that the miners may have had, which were unknown to their family, have surfaced. That's going to have to be dealt with. Um, the family also have been under acute pressure. And at the moment, while all attention is, or principal attention is on the minors, the families also have suffered an appalling stress. And one needs to look at the family group, not just at the minors, to help them through this necessary period. I think um, they will have to come to terms with that. And the difficulty will occur after the big hype has gone. I mean, it will last for a while, they'll be acknowledged as heroes for a while. Gradually, gradually, that will uh, move away. And then they will have to face up to some of the realities of life, no longer necessarily being such a prominent figure in the public eye, and have to face the 
inevitable difficulties of, uh, of living. Has your life changed much since before you went in and what it is now? Well, what happened to me in captivity uh, um, considerably focused my mind. Uh, I, I, I believe this, actually, that we live in a world of suffering, and suffering is no respect for persons. Some people suffer more than others for no reason, no fault of their own. That's just life, that's how it is. But I also believe that suffering need not destroy. That you can take suffering, you don't have to look for it, it'll find you. And you can convert it and turn it round and use it constructively. And in my experience, uh, the experience gave me the courage to be able to leave behind a salary job and to take up um, work, and support myself, and take up work with causes like Hostage UK or Overseas Development or what have you, and get on with it. Um, and give my full time, or as much as my full time as I could to that. So, in a sense, you know, I can be grateful for the experience, for focusing my mind, and for giving me the necessary strength to do what I've been doing for the last 20 years. Yes, because in emerging heroes, in um, going into various record books, in the undoubted book and media deals that will follow, that a lot of people might envy them, but in fact, we mustn't lose sight, must we, of the fact that these miners will have suffered. No, that's right. Um, the, I mean, I'm told that the, the last miner out, uh, the foreman, so I'm told, will go into the Guinness Book of Records for spending the longest time on the ground. Well, all I can say is, is good for him. And let's hope that doesn't cause you know, disputes between him and the others and, and break up any relationships that may have been formed. Because, you know, we're all human beings. There are bound to be petty jealousies, bound to be petty difficulties. One of the things also that may occur uh, after a period of time, is that some may uh, suffer flashbacks or um, what is termed today post-traumatic stress. I don't think all will. Again, I think it's largely a matter of temperament, but some may face that. And my advice is take it easy. You know, get professional help, those that need it, and uh, get it dealt with quickly. Because the longer you leave it, the more difficult it becomes. And what about faith? How, how did the experience affect your faith? And well, for me, it, it enabled my faith to be much more straightforward and much simpler. Um, I used to, in captivity, look at the great religions and rather see them as something like a Victorian parlour full of clutter and junk, doctrines and dogma that have been collected over the years. I could reduce that in captivity to the essential of faith. And I, I, I reduced it to something that's excessively simple. Uh, I said, in the face of my captains, you have the power to break my body and you've tried, the power to bend my mind and you've tried, but my soul is not yours to possess. In other words, whatever you do, even if I die, you will not destroy me. And that very simple, simple affirmation was enough to give me hope. And I think faith enables you to give hope, not necessarily good feeling. I never felt the close presence of God, but to give you hope. And if you can keep hope alive, you're three parts of the way home. Yes. Now, these miners weren't up against um, terrorists so much as nature itself. Yeah. And nature is, the, is a strong force, isn't it? It's red in tooth and claw, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> as they say. Yeah, nature is a very, very strong force. And it must have been, you know, quite terrifying for them in the first days when... They had no idea that they were ever going to be rescued and thought they were going to be entombed and die there. Um, so they were up against very, very powerful forces. But it was, it, it must have been immensely comforting. You know, when they saw the first face coming through, or the first glimmer of life coming through that little hole in the rock, and then they knew that the chances were that they would be out. The so close, that must have been really great. Absolutely. The closest thing you had to that was, was when you saw... Some flowers through a window, wasn't it? Well, I was uh, in captivity. After about three years, I discovered in the bathroom with a very small window, uh, only so big, uh, would have been left open. I looked out, and I could see in the street below a woman carrying a bunch of flowers. And I was overwhelmed by the colour, because I hadn't seen colour for years. And I thought, how magnificent. That's beautiful. And it made me, when I came out, really appreciative the, of the things that I had freely available. The sky, the wind on my face, the colour, um, the glories. And uh, somebody said to me, what do you want to do? Where would you like to go when you come out? The first place I wanted to go was a bookshop. 
uh, strictly enough. And uh, I went into this bookshop and I was totally overwhelmed by the variety of books on offer. And I thought, goodness, I've taken that for granted. You know, you learn when you're in a situation of extreme uh, deprivation that not to take too much for granted, you know, and be thankful for what you have. And so many things that we do have, like the sky, the weather, the wind, the rain, they're free. Yes, I remember once, my only comparable experience was I lost my hearing for three days once. I know it's not really comparable, but I, after medical treatment and my hearing returned, I just went and sat by the river and listened to the birds sing. Yeah. And it's the most beautiful sound I've ever heard. Yeah. So what it must be like for someone such as yourself or for these miners, having suffered such acute deprivation for such well, a... Well, of course, they came out, didn't they? They came out of that experience wearing sunglasses <laughs> uh, because of the, of the bright light. And I remember coming out and... For me, it was a sense of smell, just to be able to smell the fresh air uh, for the first time. And that was, that was truly wonderful. And I think, you know, it's, um, I wouldn't say I wanted to go through the experience just to be able to have heightened sensations later. But I would say that, you know, an experience of deprivation need not destroy. Um, you can turn it around and use it creatively. But there are going to be, as we've already discussed, a number of issues to face and let's hope you know with, with good help good support those issues will be faced and people will come out stronger rather than weaker from their experience